Gunjin, in that piece yesterday, I think the headline was the thrill is gone. That seems to sum up a lot of sentiment. That certainly seems to be the case among many individual investors that my colleague and I spoke to. And they said, hey, Wall Street Bets used to be the cool place to be. I could find these great diamonds in the rough, like GameStop and AMC. But now they're saying, now these people are still talking about GameStop and AMC. A year later, these are some of the most talked about tickers on the forum. And they're like, we want to be hunting for the next big thing. What's the next GameStop? What's the next AMC? They're saying, we can't find that on Reddit's Wall Street Bets anymore. Walk me through the uh, how, why you think options are interesting here, and are there calendar effects where we need to start paying closer attention to, um, to, get, to expirations, for example? So I think everyone's trying to figure out what led to this giant intraday reversal in markets yesterday. What's leading to this insane volatility that we've seen, that we've been seeing? And you know, the broader picture is, of course, uncertainty around the Fed and, and all these other mark, macro things um, on the table right now. But some traders I was talking to yesterday were saying that options activity might have been playing a role in that giant intraday reversal and potentially exacerbating some of the volatility that we've seen in markets. Options activity hit a record on Friday, put options volume in particular hit a high, and they're saying that maybe hedging activity by professional traders is exacerbating some of those moves as a secondary factor. Uh, just, Gunjan, to look at the situation for retail investors, I want to go back to uh, your story about Reddit and Wall Street bets, but just Reddit writ large. I'm wondering, are you aware of any sort of star amateur analysts to come out of the Reddit revolution? Because that was sort of my internal gauge a year ago on the value of this overall. Would there be people who build reputations on writing about, you know, having research consistently, not just about one or two stocks, but about sectors overall, you know, ways of looking at the market? Would they draw a following? Is that happening as a way of arming retail investors with information from what you've seen? So I think it did happen with Keith Gill, right? As we saw with the GameStop phenomenon last year, and he was, you know, one of these power users. He hasn't posted in quite a bit. But my sense is that certain people have tried to build followings. A lot of people I've been speaking to, when they're on Reddit, they want to remain anonymous. You know, some people I've spoken to, they don't want to share their names with the Wall Street Journal or with the world because they love, you know, this intimate online community that they have where they can be totally anonymous and say whatever they want. I've spoken to people who've said, hey, there are career repercussions for me if I put my name on this and give my name out to the world. So I think that's kind of a factor to consider when we think about analysts building um, followings for themselves off of Reddit. Hey, Gunjan, as we watch the Nasdaq uh, near session lows, uh, what do you think that the newer retail investors are going to be taking away from this period of volatility, this shakeout? You know, they were pulled in by the memes, but that led to greater participation in the stock market. So do they now move on to the fundamental fundamentals? And could that be a good thing? I mean, yesterday I was just looking at the forum and one of the top posts was a chart of the ARC ETF versus Berkshire Hathaway. I don't think you could imagine seeing that last year. So one of the most enduring trades of the past two years has been buying on every small dip in the market. And I think some people over the past few weeks have grown concerned, is that going to go away? Is that fading? Is that removing one source of key support for the market? And I think yesterday was really telling when the NASDAQ was down 4.9%. Everyone decided, hey, I'm going to smash that buy button right now. And we saw that incredible rebound in Tesla, NVIDIA, ARC. Um, so I think that's the key question. Do they stick to that trade? How, how are they positioning in this environment?